Greet you all in the highly exalted, wonderful, precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to the whole Bible tour in three years. Turning our Bibles to Psalm 68, verses 1 to 18. The psalm describes an onward march of God throughout history to his final triumph. And uh, the threefold reference to the sanctuary in verses 17, verses 24, and verses 35 of Psalm 68, it uh, suggests that it's like Psalm 24 or in 2 Samuel chapter 6, verses 15 to 17, we see that there was a huge throng that had gone to bring um, the Ark of the Covenant back to the tent that has been prepared for it and they offered a lot of sacrifices. So it was in this, uh, it's likely to be in this context. And uh, especially when we see the Lord's Ark or when we see the Lord's uh, uh, presence uh, coming into um, the people, coming into the place that has been destined for it, uh, we see three uh, various different kinds of effect of the appearing of the presence of God. In the first two verses, we see what is happening to the enemy. The first verse, it says, may God arise, may his enemies be scattered, may his foes flee before him. So um, now as God comes, then we see that the enemies are being scattered and they are fleeing before him. Nobody can stand before the Lord. Even the whole world cannot stand before him. And in fact, uh, uh, in verse 2, he gives them, he gives a more clear picture and, he's, uh, and he very pictorially says, you blow them away like smoke. Uh, you know, smoke is no resistance for um, the wind. Smoke is no resistance for uh, the blowing of air. In the same way, the wicked are no resistance for the power of the Lord. In fact, not even the wicked, even the whole earth cannot stand before the presence of the Lord. And that's why in verse 2, he says, as, as wax melts before fire, or the wax has to melt. It just has to go beyond shape. It just has to uh, crumble and fall and, and, and just melt before uh, fire. In the same way, many wicked perish before the Lord. So this is his prayer. Um, and this is the uh, effect of the Lord's appearing towards the enemies. Uh, now, we ought to recognize how great our God is uh, and that there is no enemy that can stand before God. In fact, um, Paul writing to the Corinthian church, he says, death is the last enemy. And uh, when Jesus rose again from the dead, um, it is said, Oh grave, where is your victory? Oh death, where is your sting? And oh grave, where is your victory? So however powerful the enemy may be, even as powerful as death, he is no match to stand before the Lord. And that's that's the assurance that we have, uh, that if the Lord is for us, who can be against us? And then uh, in verses 3 and 4, he is talking about what is happening to the righteous. Now, this is not different appearances of the Lord, but it's the same appearance of the Lord, but different people are uh, responding in a different way. It is uh, the enemies are being scattered. The enemies are being uh, uh, blown away like smoke. The enemies wet like max. But when it comes to the righteous in verse 3 and 4, he says, but the righteous may be glad they rejoice before God. May they be happy and joyful. What a contrast. What a difference. It's all about whether you are on the side of God or not. It's not about whether God is on your side. When Joshua when do I, um, at that point, uh, he sees the commander of heavenly armies and he asks, are you on our side or are you on their side? But uh, finally, uh, he understood that it's not whether God is on his size, uh, side, but it is more prominent that uh, whether he is on God's side. So we ought to be on God's side. We ought to be on the side of the world. And uh, this is what we can uh, decide and the verse 3 and 4 it says when you are on the side of the Lord then you are glad then you're happy then you're um, uh, or then you rejoice and uh, you you sing in verse 4 he says sing to the Lord sing and pray uh, praise to his name extol him who writes on clouds or uh, rejoice before him his name is the Lord uh, so great amount of rejoicing and uh, great amount of praises, great amount of uh, 
um, you know, meditating and uh, thinking and uh, and pouring into our mind who God is. What a beautiful, what a beautiful um, difference. Uh, uh, the enemies have fear, but these people have gladness. The enemies are scattered, but these people are assembled. The enemies uh, flee, but these people rejoice. Uh, so it's all about how you are with the Lord. When you are against the Lord, you cannot stand. Whoever it may be, you know, God doesn't have any favoritism. When even his best of saints, the best of the heroes of scripture, even if they sin, the Lord is not going to hide their scars or hide their sins. He just wants people to be righteous and stand on his side. And uh, three and four uh, are people who are righteous, who come to stand on the side of the Lord. And verses five and six are uh, verses that show what has happened to the helpless people. Now, the same presence of the Lord, the same theophany, um, and uh, enemies are scattered, uh, righteous are rejoicing. You now, what's happening to the helpless? In verse 5 and 6, it says, A father to the fatherless, a defender of the widows, is God in his holy, holy place. God sets the lonely in families. He leads out the prisoners with singing, but the rebellious live in a scorched land. So here we see that the helpless are being helped, uh, that the destitute are being settled, uh, that uh, uh, when God is in his holy dwelling, then everything uh, for these humble people, these helpless people who look to the Lord, they are being blessed, they are being uh, uh, rewarded in full. But then at the same time, he also mentions about the righteous. They might be living in the same land, but the righteous, they live in a sun-scorched land. These righteous are being destroyed. These righteous are being uh, thrown out. Now, we ought to recognize which side are we standing. Are we, uh, are we enemies to the Lord or are we righteous or are we helpless? So it is the same Lord, but uh, uh, people are uh, responding. People are receiving in a different way. Now, it, it's the same thing. Now, uh, if, if it's fire... Now, when, when the fire uh, comes to gold, then the gold is purified. But when the fire uh, touches the stubble, then the stubble is destroyed. And when fire uh, um, uh, touches a human being, it causes death. So it, it's, it's all about who you are rather than what the fire is. The fire is fire always. God is God always. Who we are makes all the difference. How we respond to him. Because God is an immutable God. It was uh, seven onwards. Uh, up till verse 18, uh, we see the historical context uh, uh, being written in uh, Judges chapter 5, verses 4 and 5. It says, when you, Lord, went out from Sire, when you marched out from the land of Edom, the earth shook, the heavens poured, uh, the clouds poured down water, the mountains quaked before the Lord, the one uh, of Sinai before uh, God, uh, the God of Israel. That's what Judges chapter 5 verses 4 and 5 says. Now this is what was happening uh, when Deborah uh, was singing the song and uh, uh, Sisera was defeated, uh, was totally, totally uh, annihilated. Uh, and we see um, that Deborah is singing this song. So this might be the context, uh, the historical context from verses 7 to 18. And um, when we come to verse uh, 13, uh, 13, the second part, it says the wings of the dove are sheathed with uh, silver, its feathers with shining gold. Now, uh, the exact meaning may be unclear, but uh, different scholars suggest that this might be uh, the plunder. This might be a song that is writing about the plunder that had been brought from Sisera in uh, in Judges chapter 5 and verse 30. It says, are they not finding and dividing the spoils of women or two for each man? Colorful garments as, pl as, as plunder uh, for Sisera, colorful garments embroidered, highly embroidered garments for my neck as my plunder. Uh, uh, so um, he's talking about all of these as plunder. So it, the context uh, is talking about Sisera. So this might be a uh, probable um, interpretation for this unclear verse. And uh, there might also be a second interpretation in uh, Exodus chapter 25 verses 20 to 22. Uh, we see the uh, picture of the cherubim, uh, the wing of the cherubim uh, that is being mentioned. Uh, that's uh, um, the uh, wing of the cherubim uh, being mentioned as uh, 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 feathers with shining gold. Now, the, we've seen that the ark was being brought in. So uh, it, it, it might be either of these contexts. And uh, 
um, every time uh, we see the Lord coming into his glory, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Uh, whether it might be uh, the ark coming, whether it might be Deborah uh, um, uh, winning the victory, or it might be the Lord Jesus coming uh, with power. That's what uh, the same reference is taken uh, from uh, 17 and 18. Um, and it is uh, presented to the coming of the Lord or, uh, uh, or the resurrection of the Lord in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 8. It says, that's why it says, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave them uh, gave gifts to his people. So every time the Lord comes, it's it's victory, it's goodness for his people, it's gifts for his people. And uh, uh, Psalm 24 verses 7 to 10 also we see the same context. It says, uh, oh, 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 ancient gates, lift up uh, your heads uh, uh, because the king of glory is coming in. Every time the ark came and the people were right, every time uh, um, the Lord gave them victory and the people were right, and when Christ rose and people were right, it always, it always brought gifts, it always brought spiritual endowment from the Lord. So it's all about we being right with the Lord, we being on the side of the Lord. If God is for us, who can be against us? God is always on the side of the righteous, for the humble and for the meek in heart. Now, it is our prerogative that we need to be in that humble group, in that meek group, in that helpless group, calling out to the Lord and the Lord is definite to help us through. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for that precious, precious word and help us to respond in a way that we are always on your side. Not a split second my word in our life, wherein we go into a proud, into a haughty, a haughty position, wherein Oh Lord, we become enemies to you. Jesus' wonderful, precious name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.